the challenge of the Yukon. And king on your huskies! The wonder dog king, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King met that challenge and justice ruled triumphant. Inspector Colson of the Northwest Mounted Police looked approvingly at the tall, broad-shouldered sergeant who entered his office, followed by a large husky. The dog stayed close at the Mounties' heels and stopped beside him when the inspector spoke. Good morning, Sergeant President. Good morning, sir. You returned sooner than you expected, didn't you? Yes, sir. I uh, brought in a criminal, but one I didn't go after. This, uh, this man is a murderer and attempted to kill you, is that right? Yes, sir. But in my opinion, he's insane. I think his mind cracked due to his age and the hard life he lived in the wilderness. Uh, uh, pull up a chair and sit down, Preston. I'd like to hear the case from the beginning. Yes, sir. Lie down, King. <laughs> it uh, wasn't just coincidence that I went up to Matt Clemens' cabin. He'd asked me to stop by on my way north. I met him in Jean Dupre's trading post about two weeks ago buying supplies. Matt, as you know, was an old sourdough. I'd known him for years. He lived about 20 miles north of here with his partner, Zeb Rankin. Where's Matt older than his partner? They were all... Matt may have been a little younger, all in his late 60s. Matt had come to town alone for his supplies. Hello! Hello, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Jean. Well, if there isn't Matt Clemens. Matt, how are you? Well, hello, Sergeant. Sure is a coon's age since I've laid eyes on you. There's King. <laughs> Hello, boy. <laughs> I swear he looks bigger than ever. You uh, just got to town? Yep. Came for our winter supplies. Got a big load to take back. You know, Sergeant, what I tell him? Eb and him should come in town to live through this bad winter. <laughs> it is too hard life to live up in woods so far away. Well, we've been doing it for a good many years. We're used to it. Where is Zeb? Uh, the hotel? No, he wouldn't come with me this trip, Sergeant. I had to come all alone. Wouldn't come with you? Why, is he sick or something? Nope. Just didn't want to come. Well, me, I would like to see somebody after being alone so long. Yes. I should think he'd welcome the opportunity to take a trip to town. He always used to before... Uh, maybe he's just getting old. You staying at the hotel, Matt? Yep. I'll be here for a couple of days. Just dropped in to say hello to Gene, give him a list of what I want to take back with me. Well, I'll walk back with you if you're going now. I will have everything ready for you, Matt, when you want. That's fine. Oh, uh, Gene, I want to add another case of dried salmon to my load tomorrow. I'm afraid I didn't get enough. I'm going north on a long patrol. You stop for it tomorrow? Yeah. Coming, Matt? Yep. See you tomorrow, Gene. Good night. Bonjour. Good night, Sergeant. It's getting colder. Well, I hope it doesn't get too bad. I'm off on a patrol tomorrow. You going anywhere near our place, Sergeant? Not this trip, Matt. But I will be up that way in about three weeks. Well, I wish you'd stop and stay with us a few days. Your place is so far off the beaten track, I hardly think I can. Well, I didn't mean just to visit. I thought maybe you could uh, talk to Zeb. Talk to him? Well, I've been wanting to do like Gene said, come into town for the winter. But Zeb won't listen to it. Well, if you can't convince him, I don't see how I can. Zeb's been acting awful funny lately. Funny? I guess I can trust you. You see, we hit a mighty rich vein of gold on our claim. Why, that's fine, Matt. I'm glad to hear it. Well, don't tell nobody. We was just panning about enough gold to live on before. But now we'll have enough to retire on by next year. Well, you've both worked hard for many years. You certainly deserve it. Yep. But it's made Zeb act funny. Oh? <laughs> Here we are. Here's a hotel. And we sit in the lobby for a minute. All right. Guess 
everybody's in the bar. Uh, we can talk quiet there in the corner. Lie well, down here, King. <laughs> now, uh, tell me about Zeb. Well, getting that gold seems to have made kind of a miser out of him. He's scared somebody's going to get it. He even acts suspicious of me now and then. Of you? But you're his best friend. I know it. But he thinks I'm trying to get more in my share. Oh. And he does funny things. Like uh, peering in at me through the window. When he thinks I don't know he's doing it. And he watches you? Yes. It, it, it's kind of creepy. A couple of times he made me let him count all the gold. After I'd already divided it. Well, after all, Zeb is getting along in years. Well, just the same. I wish you'd stop in and talk to him uh, the next time you're near our ken. All right, Matt. I'll plan to stay overnight with you on my next trip. That'll be in a week or two. Maybe I can tell what's wrong. On my way north, I turned off the trail and headed for Matt's cabin on Beaver Creek. It had been a heavy snow, and I had to break a trail through the forest. Darkness had fallen by the time we got to the cabin. The light shining through the window guided me to it. Then as I neared it, a shot rang out. The bullet whizzed past my ear, and I jumped behind a large spruce tree as Zeb's voice called, Get away from here! Get away or I'll fill you full of lead! Go on! Get! Go on! Zeb, it's Sergeant Preston. Put that gun down. Who? Who is it? It's Preston. I've come to spend the night with you and Matt. Preston? The money? Yes. All right, come on, but come slow. How do I know you're telling the truth? Here, King. Come along, boy. Put that gun away, Zeb. You should know my voice. Where's Matt? Matt? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you're Preston, all right. Take that gun out of my face. Didn't Matt tell you I was coming? No. No, he didn't. I saw him when he was in Dawson. I told him I'd stop in on my way north. He didn't tell me. Isn't he here? No! No, he ain't. Where is he? He he went hunting. Yes, he he went hunting. Will he be back tonight? No. He won't be back tonight. Oh, I'm sorry. I wanted to see him. Here, here, you, your dog. Call him back. Well, what's wrong? Here, King. King, come back here, fella. He must have seen something back there. Well, keep him here. I feed some little white rabbits, and they're, they're just like pets. And maybe he'll try to chase one. Stay here, fella. Stay with me. Well, I'll fix the dogs for the night, Zed. Well, you, you'll tie them, won't you, so they won't get away? Why, of course. I always do. All except King. Well, can't you tie King, too? Why, Zeb, you've always let me keep King in the cabin at night. What's wrong? Uh, oh, yes. But but you'll put him in the cabin before you fix a dog so he can't run around, I, I mean. <laughs> well, just as you say, Zeb. Come on, King. <laughs> I put King in the cabin, fed and unhitched my team. Zeb never left my side. He followed me around watching everything that I did. When we got back into the cabin, I was shocked when I saw his face in the lamplight. It was dead white. Only his eyes seemed alive, and they burned like little black coals as they watched me. I knew then what Matt had meant. Those eyes made my spine tingle. <laughs> well, Zeb, uh, shall we have some supper? Supper? Uh, yeah. I guess maybe we should eat. Too bad Matt didn't get back with some fresh venison. I like the way he cooks it. Why are you always talking about Matt? Why, uh, I didn't know that I was. Hey, he's gone hunting, I tell you. He's gone hunting. Yes, I know. Don't get excited, Zeb. I'm not excited. Why do you say I'm excited? Oh, that dog. You should have chained him outside with the rest of them. He... He keeps walking around near the he, door. He uh, does seem a little uh, restless. I suppose he's hungry. Come here, King. I'll give you some supper. Uh, have you got something to tie him up with? Why, I have his leash. Well, you better tie him up tonight. I'm wandering around the cabin. But Zeb, he'll sleep right beside my bunk. Not tonight. You tie him up there in the corner. Well, it's your cabin. What's that? 
Listen. Well, that's just my dog. <laughs> Why are they howling? They often howl at the moon. What's wrong with you, Zeb? Nothing. Nothing. Let's get some supper cooking. King didn't like being tied in the corner for the night, but I had to humor old Zeb. Matt was certainly right. The old fellow was definitely a bit balmy. As I went to bed, I decided to wait until Matt got back and then talk them both into going to Dawson for the rest of the winter. I was tired and fell into a deep sleep. It was hours later when I was awakened suddenly by a deep growl from King. I sat up in bed quickly. Everything was quiet. Then King growled again. I reached under my pillow for my matches and struck one. As it flared up, I saw the figure of Zeb. It was on his hands and knees, crawling toward my bunk, and a knife gleamed in his hand. I leaped out of bed and lighted the lamp on the table. Zeb was sitting on the edge of the bed. He was shaking violently as I went toward him. <laughs> What's wrong with you? I, I, my gold. I dreamed my gold. Here, uh, wrap this blanket around you. You must have been dreaming. Give me that knife. Knife? Yes. Here, I'll take it. Now, uh, you get back into bed before you freeze that. My gold. My gold. Your gold is safe. Come on. Get into your bunk and I'll cover you up. I can assure you I didn't do much sleeping the rest of the night. When morning came, I dressed quietly and started out the door with King. There was something in back of cabin that Zeb did not want us to see. And why didn't he want the dogs back there? King ahead of me. And suddenly I heard the door of the cabin open and shut. I turned in time to see the wild figure of Zeb, his white hair flying in the wind, raising a rifle that was aimed at King. I made a flying tackle and we rolled in the snow as the gun fired. I've got you, Zeb. Back to you. It's all right, fellow. I've got him. Get up, Zeb. Up, I say. Let me go. Stop it. No. Quiet, King. Quiet. Come along, Zeb. We're going to find out what it is you're afraid to have King find. All right, King. Find it, boy. He was heading for that pile of branches. Come on, Zeb. No, no. I, I don't want to look. Pull these branches off. <laughs> he was trying to take it off. Oh. All my nice gold. It's Matt. I got here too late. Oh, poor Matt. I had to kill him to keep him from stealing my gold. Everyone wants to steal my gold. Everyone. Well, uh, go in and get your gold, Zeb. And then I'll take you back with me. Back where you and your gold will be safe. Come along, King. Come on, Zeb. Well, sir... I finally convinced Zeb that I wasn't going to steal his gold. He uh, held it in his arms on the sled all the way back to Dawson. He's still holding it, Inspector, in his cell. He's completely mad. We'll have the doctors examine Zeb. He'll undoubtedly be sent to an institution. Well, that's what should be done with him, sir. We owe a lot to that dog of yours. We're lucky to get back. He's a smart animal. Yes, sir. But that's all in a day's work, isn't it, King? (laughs) These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WFYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at this same time. This is Larry McCann speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.